Wow, today's an exciting day. We're actually we got George Keaston over here from CES, and we're going to do a blower door test on the house. You know, from start to finish, we've been thinking of these details. We framed the house. We did a certain way to prevent air infiltration. We put the exterior insulation. We caulked. We staggered joints. We put windows. We flashed caulk. All these things. And today is kind of like, not, I don't want to say a test. That's the wrong word. But it's kind of like a progress report. Let us see how well we did with all these things. And we can catch some problems now before we move on to insulation. So it's really neat. So come join us. Hey George, how you doing? Hey Dave, nice to see you again. All right, I see you here already. You yeah. got the equipment. Got, got one of my guys here, Paul Sikas. Hey, how you doing Paul? You Help out with best. today's blower door. Perfect. Um, perfect. So it's a wonderful day. Yeah. We, we, we always enjoy uh, this pre-insulation inspection. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a time where we can see how well this building was actually sealed. Mm -hmm. uh, find any problems today start addressing them, and then once we get past today, we can go ahead and get a uh, good insulation um, installed and then do another blower door after this. Okay. So th this is one of two. Um, we'll also go through a little bit of our thermal bypass checklist, okay. which is by Energy Star, uh -huh. which helps identify things that we could be seeing mm -hmm. that uh, we want to make sure we have the right insulation in the right spots. And it's a good checklist for the, ultimately for the HERS rating. Well, good, good, good. You know, I'm interested in that. You know, that, that's like I say, I've been paying attention to these details all the way and don't want to stop now. So let's continue on with that. That sounds great. So what is that, George? So we have here a frame. Uh, this frame gets compressed inside of a door opening. Uh, with some cam locks okay. and uh, what that helps is create an air seal right here because oh, we don't okay. want to have uh, the door itself be leakage oh, so we need okay. to take that out of the equation okay. so with this uh, we use Minneapolis blower door kind of the manufacturer who's, who's really into this uh, we'll set the fan inside the door and we'll you know, start hearing it rumble and We'll start depressurizing this house. Wow, wow. Is there anything we should look at ahead of time? Yeah, so what I'd like to do while Paul is setting this up is we're going to go around and we're going to do a pre-blower door inspection. And okay. the goal for that is just a quick look with a pad, see if we see any big openings, see if we mm -hmm. see any holes. Uh, now's the time to catch it. Once we do the start the blower door, we're going to go around with a little smoke puffer and we're going to see if we can find some more. Right. Paul's also brought his IR camera. Right. We're going to shoot for any IR losses. So right. we're going to, once we get going, we're going to run it, we're going to idle it, and then we're going to see how we do. Yeah, so this is, you know, following the thermal wall of the house where it's kind of framing is weird when you look at it this way that we drop down for the garage wall, you know, right. continuous on that, that side. So we have a little bit of a gap right here between these studs. Right. And the only question will be as you taped the inside, right. Right. you know, did we, did we create a good air barrier there? Right. So these will be things that we'll catch either in IR or right. with our smoke test. So basically the rest of it, I'm just kind of looking, right, saying, Hey, do I see any daylight coming through right now? And again, the blower door is going to give us a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. a lot of information. And even this stuff in here, Dave, you know, in the future, mm -hmm. these small gaps, okay. these may be foaming gaps. Okay, you know, okay, yeah. I would, you know, we're talking about using a cellulose. It's just never going to get a good pack in there. Okay. So I would say this is the small areas as you're doing your windows and doors. Think of this as a okay. gap between the windows and doors. Okay. I, I think you're going to be better off. What about better stuff off. like this, George? So, th you, you know, know, where you have a two by and they've got, you know, just the way they do it. They open up a yeah, little bit. It, it's possible. We'll see if there's any leakage here. I'm not, I, I'm not always going to see this because okay. you have a, a flashing detail on the outside of this yes, window yeah. and that may have captured all of the air sealing. Okay. Okay. Right, right. So these are the areas that will be the little trickies. Right. These will be the ones that we're going to see. How come we're getting so much leakage? Right. We'll, we'll find it. We'll find it around there. Right. Hey, Paul, you got that fan running? Yeah, we're idling at about negative 25 pascals. Wow, that thing's going good and slow, huh? Yeah, real slow for a brand new house. Yeah. Oh, Gee, yeah, Dave, I hate to give you the good news right off, but that's a great sign. So okay. if uh, your house was really leaky, uh, like if there was a door open, <laughs> you'd hear this fan will start to ramp up in oh. speed because it's trying to create a pressure differential. Gotcha. So because we lock it, it's slowing, it's slowing way down, which is a good sign. But we'll simulate it all on our program, which okay. will take it to a five-step method. We will actually go real, uh, very low Pascals to 50 Pascals. Oh. And it'll actually plot it over time oh, to see okay. how it is, basically simulating different wind speeds at mm -hmm. that point in time. 
So Dave, what we're going to do is we're going to do a baseline test because mm -hmm. what we're trying to do is figure out how much pressure the house, is, how much leakage is going on with right. the house. Mm -hmm. So we're going to uh, do what's called a cruise mm -hmm. and we're going to cruise the fan so that it comes up to speed. You can hear just starting right. and it's going to start bopping around a little bit here to get us to a, a CFM 50, which is a, a, a rate of pressurization on the house. You can hear it slowly going up, it's mm -hmm. ramping. Yeah. So we are now sucking the air out of the house. Mm -hmm. And the only, only way to get the air to be sucked out is to come in through leakage. Right, okay. okay. All right, so Dave, so what we're trying to do is smoke it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Paul's gonna IR it. Um, IR's gotta have best 20 degrees inside to outside. Okay. But a smoke doesn't really matter. So this is a chemical smoker. And you kind of just watch the smoke. And, it, and if it starts to go towards the fan, mm -hmm. you know there's a leak in, in those okay. areas. Um, what I'm going to do is grab this ladder here mm -hmm. and get up there and see if we can pick that one up. All right, <laughs> so, so this is what's bad when you just completely, yep. if I meander the smoke, you see how it takes it away. Yep. Yep. All right, so, and if you put your hand up here, why don't you come up, Dave, and take a, take a look at it. Oh, wow, feel that. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. So uh, smoke below it. Mm -hmm. So you let it go up and you can see it stream away. Oh yeah, it just like disappears, yeah. Right? So that's, yeah. that's a leakage. The uh, infrared camera is taking a vision. Do you have, Paul, do you have his uh, handprint up there? So if I put my hand right up here and I just take it away, as you can see a handprint. So uh, very sensitive. So we're looking for air leakage. Um, and Dave, if you, if you just come up this, you these think cracks. You can feel it? Well, yeah. So here's your, put your hand up this one right here. Oh, I can feel it on this so one. So I'll do this pump, this pump again, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's hard. You can see how it, see how it accelerates? Mm -hmm. The smoke's accelerating. Okay, so put, now put your hand up there. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, it's faint, but yes. it's faint. Yeah, but so, even though it's two layers and stag, right. it's going between. So these are the layers. These are the things that are loo that upstairs when you did that flash. Right. This that would take this away. Okay. So I see up in here, George. Yeah. Right. You can see the air striations. Yeah. So, so right it's kind of like a bumpy looking right. versus a thermal. Yeah. Okay, but this whole corner. Mm -hmm. is really picking up a lot of air striations all right, the way through and there. Right, seam right above. Yep, right there. So the, yep. you can see the, yep. the pieces and parts, mm -hmm. which is, you know, some of this, you're just discerning between thermal right. and uh, airstream. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when it looks like that, yeah. right there, adds airstream. Stream. And so here's a window, you can see thermal, right? Because right. it's a consistent color. So that's an mm -hmm. airstream. So I'll say, okay. you know, overall, Dave, this is really good. Um, no, but, and, but, and we're looking at this and you're going, oh, I got Airstream. But that's common, right? right. Um, so we're going to, you know, you're going to go in and you're going to flash a, uh, some, some right. foam over these. Uh, you could caulk every joint, but the flashing would be oh, easier. So much, yeah, well, and well, you, you yeah. flash it all and you take it from there. Right, right. So, you know, it's funny. I'm going crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, just think about what you would see in a normal house. Oh. It's like... You'd have to tone down the sensitivity of the Correct. thing because there's so much coming in. So as we go upstairs, you know, we have a roof and we have a wall mm -hmm. and there's joints, right? There's a connection there and it's got just wood on wood on wood. There's no air sealing. Okay. So often we'll find it right at the, at the intersection <clears throat> between the roof and the wall. Um, less on the sill at that point, but still around the windows. Okay. So let's see what we can find. Okay. We were saying earlier, Dave, but this is the flash and bat. Right. You can see there's a minimal amount of foam that you put in right here. We're getting some, some movement. Okay. I can actually feel it. Right. Whereas this one here is perfectly good. And then you miss this one here and it's screaming. So you gave a good example exactly right. of how the air sealing is or isn't working. Right. So Dave, I mean, it looks pretty good up here. Like we said earlier, you know, wherever we had these wall intersections and these 
the, the different pieces and parts touching mm -hmm. really is where you got to get in there and do some air sealing. And I think the best way is going to be is a fan, a broad fan spray with a, your, your foam system. Right. And just a thin layer is all you need. Right. We yeah. saw when you were a little loose on the layer. Yeah. And when you had a bigger, fatter layer, yeah. everything was fine. So, you exactly. know, two to three inches makes a, right. makes a world of difference. Yeah. So let's go downstairs to the basement. Uh, we have concrete walls, so they won't be leaking yeah. any right. air. But uh, we'll, wherever our joints are connected, our sills, okay. that's going to be where we're going to look All for right. next. It's a little tricky to get down there. <laughs> so Dave, this uh, sill looks really good. Um, I, you know, with that double sill sealer, mm -hmm. which is a low cost way of getting a better seal with all the undulations of the concrete, um, looks pretty tight. So that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, normally we see a lot of air leakage in there when mm -hmm. people cut back on that second simple layer. Right. Um, you know, we have some penetrations over by the, by the power panel board, right. which makes sense. We just got to get in there and foam them up, mm -hmm. uh, and have them in, install uh, some air sealing. But, you know, you don't typically get much leakage, of course, in the way of, uh, of, a, flu of a concrete wall. Right. You know, that's very good for You get right. a lot of thermal conductivity, right. but no air leakage. Right, so, so what, what we did on here, we have the two inch XPS on the outside, right. and then we're gonna put two inches on the inside, like yep. I put behind the panels here, and before Correct. we put the plywood and for the inverters, but we'll continue that along. And I took your advice, and we'll foam that top piece. Sure, we'll, it would, to it. we'll get this, we'll get that straight up, and at right. the top, just kind of tie it all together yeah, right. when, you, when you cover off that surface, right. and that will give us a good joint. This coming up in a, a, a seal up top, and then you, you'll start locking it all in. Right, and that um, way when the wood dries out or settles a little bit, that we don't pull away from there. Right, yeah. and even down below here at the, at the yeah. base, you yeah. know, where you have this yeah. bottom piece now, you know, we talked about that earlier, mm -hmm. to stop that thermal connectivity from this slab into that wall, yeah. you know, just a nice, a nice right. detail to keep it all, mm -hmm. all tightened up. So this looks good. I think mm -hmm. um, typically the basement, if we get past the sill, there's not much more. That and the in, incoming electrical service. Right. We get past those, we have, uh, we have things pulled together pretty strong. Okay. So all in all, pretty good. Awesome. So Dave, you know, I think uh, overall we did pretty good here today. Uh, certainly you can see now with the thermal imaging camera and a little bit of smoke testing uh, right. where things are consistent. I think that's always the key, right. is wherever we intersect yep. two materials, that's a spot where it could leak. But, you know, I wouldn't leave being depressed. Right. I mean, the overall blower door test, the CFM that we have, really is a, our good numbers. Okay. So now you go back in, a little more labor, a little more materials, and we're gonna watch a big difference happen because we'll catch, we'll catch these at five and 10 CFM a piece. Right. We might have, you know, uh, uh, 50 different places we're gonna find them, and you're gonna take that 2,500 CFM down to 1,500. So mm -hmm. I think that's where you can go. Right. So with that, I think I'm gonna shut things down and wrap it up. And we'll be back once you see the drywall up. Right. At that point, we can come back in and do our, our, our last test drywall. I always like to have all uh, appliances in. Oh, okay. Right. Drywall, kind of more, you're ready to move in. We're gonna do that last test. Right, right. Well, I'll tell you, it was real informative, George. Really appreciate it. bringing Paul along with that IR gun. You know, we started with the smoke, but I couldn't imagine going to all these places where he right. could just stand back and scan a whole wall and just so quickly identify issues. And, you know, pretty much what you decided before it happened. So Correct. good knowledge on your behalf, just knowing jobs and problem areas and stuff like that. So that was great. Well, good. thank you, George. Thank you very you. much. Always a pleasure. All right. All right. That was awesome. And you really learned a lot, you know, between the IR camera and, you know, that little smoke test, you know, I was so due diligent on certain things. And you can see where, you know, I may have thinking about something else or not. They're not doing that great of a job. Amazing. So that was super. So I really appreciate that. Uh, these guys coming out and uh, giving everybody an education on this. That's awesome. Thanks.